Hello Chess Programmers Video number 14 about how to write a chess program in Go One of the most important features in a chess program is to generate moves and we want to generate them as fast as possible As we have big boards the king and the knight are fairly easy to have all the moves pre-calculated because on each of the 64 squares they have fixed squares they can go to but when it comes to sliding pieces it's not as easy uh, if you look at this position here you see the rook can go to all squares in all directions and if we have this situation always we could do the same. We could have pre-calculated squares, attack squares from the rook. But in a game it's not easy like this because we will have blocking pieces, both our own and enemy pieces. Here are all the bits for all the pieces on the board and these are the white pieces on the board. Nothing strange with this. And these are all the attacks that the rook has on all the, pe uh, all the squares. If we look at this position instead, we have these blocking pieces. The, the two bishops, if you look at the two bishops, uh, actually it's only the white bishop that blocks. The black bishop doesn't really block. And the same with the queen. It's, even if you remove the black pawn, the queen doesn't really block. It can move there anywhere. It attacked that square anyway because there are no squares beyond that queen and that is an important fact that we will look more into later on we call all these pieces for blockers the real blockers are these three they are the one who really blocks the rook and these are the all the blockers as a bit board it would be very good if we could use this as an index in the same way we do with kings and knights just an index that give us another bit board with all the attacks that the rook can do from d4 but unfortunately <laughs> that would be a huge 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 table and we cannot do that i mean we need one for each configuration of blockers so with the rook on d4 we have and with these these blockers we can have a number a magic number and when we multiply that number with this number that this bit board is we will get an index that we can use to get the bit board with attacks from d4 the rook attacks from d4 and in fact we can use that for any combination we can use that magic number for any combination of blockers if the rook is on d4 and multiply and get an index into a table with the attacks from d4 that will be different with different configuration of blockers furthermore we can have one magic number for each square with a rook on any of these 64 squares. We can have 64 different magic numbers and we multiply with the blockers configuration and we get the index and we get all the attacks that the rook has. And that works with all different configuration of blockers. And we can do exactly the same thing with bishops. So every every square, 64 squares with a bishop, we have a magic number for that square and that bishop. That can be multiplied with the blockers, with a bit board with blockers. And we get an attack bit board. With the position that we are looking at, and we have the rook on d4, this is the attack bit board that we will get from this position and this bit board is what we will get when we use the 
index that we computed. And here we will see how it's done. This is what we get when we multiply our blocker bitboard with the magic number. Where is the index? Well, here it is. In fact, this is exactly the bits that we had on the rows and the file, but they are combined together to one line. The rest of the bitboard is garbage. So, in order to get rid of that, we shift everything to the end of the bitboard, or beginning if you want to call it that. In that way we get rid of all the garbage, and we can use this as an index to get this attack bitboard. And there is one more little thing about this. The end bits. I mean the bits on the end of each direction. We don't need to use them uh, when we use the bit magic bit number. Because it doesn't matter if there is a piece, our own piece, or opponent piece, or uh, no piece at all on these squares. It will not change our attacks. So if our attacks has no, if we have no blockers, the attacks will go all the way to that square whether it's occupied or not. And if there are blockers, that square doesn't matter anyway. We can remove that. If we count the bits we have, the D4, the square D4, we don't need to count. And we remove the end bit boards, uh, bits. We have five bits left on the row and five bits on the file. That's 10 bits. So 10 bits, so two to the power of 10 is the maximum combination of blockers that we can have. So that is the size of the table we need for the rook on d4. If we are lucky enough, we find a magic number that reuse, that can reuse some of these combination of, of uh, blockers. Some of them can be reused because they have the same attacking bitboard in the end. How do we find good magic numbers? Well, it's by trial and error. Experience show that the best way is to randomly search through the space of possible numbers. And of course, you use the number of bits. In this case, with the rook on d4, it's 10 bits as a limit for how many index we need to cover all the combinations of blockers for one square with the rook and the same for bishops. So let's implement some of the data and some of the code that, that I have played around with in another program. I will create a new Go file, magic.go, and copy-paste from the other program that I have used for trying out different solutions. And here it is. So let's go through what, what I have here. First of all, the struct. I call it S magic. And uh, this is the struct that we will have for each square for the bishop and the rook. And the first thing you see there is two square bit board. That is all the possible attackers. A bit board with all the possible attackers for each combination of blockers. The size of this one is depending on the number of bits that we talked about before. The inner bit board is all the attacks on an empty board without blockers. And that we can have fixed. I call it inner bit board because I have removed all the end bits, also what we talked about before. So this is all the attacks without the end bits. Magic is the magic number, and shift is how many bits we should shift to remove all the garbage that we always get when we do this magic operation. And below there we have M bishop tab and M rook tab, and these are the tabs keeping the S magic struct. This method, this function, attacks is the one that do the magic. So first 
I have this OCC variable occupancies. You start to put all the bits, all the pieces on the board, then an end with the inner bit board. Now we have all the blockers from this square, and then we do the magic uh, multiplication. Multiply this bit board with the magic number, and now we can return bit board with a tax. And that's almost magic. Let's go down and see what we have. Uh, here is the init magic, how to initialize the M Bishop tab and the Rook tab. To start with, we have this fill optimal magic, one for Bishop and down there one for Rooks. And this fill optimal magics is magics, the magic numbers that other people have found where they can use lower number of bits and that means less table size for each for some of the squares so i just borrow them and replace the one i have with these optimal and i do the same for bishops and rook and further down we have these two tables with number of bits for the rooks and number of bits for the bishop for each square. This fill optimal magic that we looked before uh, replace some of these bits. And below here we have the actual magic numbers 64 for the bishop and 64 for the rooks. To generate them I borrowed this uh, function from Tord Romstad. The guy, one of the guys who started the development of Stockfish. This code is a C code, so I translated it to Go. It can be found there on that link I have here. That site will be closed. Everything will be moved to another place. I don't know where. It's well worth to uh, look at this site because there is a lot of information about chess program and a lot of information about magic numbers. And let's take a look at this, how we can initialize these uh, S rook m tab and S bishop m tab. There are two loops, one for bishops, one for rooks. And they go through all the squares from a1 to h8. We start with uh, shift, the number of bits, how many bits we should shift to get rid of the garbage and to get the number, a clean number. And also uh, the inner bb for each square, inner uh, bit board. And that's just a uh, function. I don't think we need to look at that. Very similar to the simple generate simple rook moves that we did before. For each magic we can copy in the magic from the magic table we had below. We looked at before. Of course we don't need to put in the magic number here because we have them already down in the table by themselves. But I like to have them here. And the same for the rooks. Another thing that we are doing in this init magic function is the two things here prepare magic B for bishop, prepare magic R for rooks. If we look at one of these, prepare magic bishop in this case, it starts with these uh, directions. These are the direction the bishop can do on the board. If you look at columns and files. Okay, bitcomps function is the heart here. We go through all the squares and make this bitcomps function for each square. And bitcomps is a recursive function that find all the configuration of blockers that we can have. For each combination of blockers, we compute the magic, we use the magic number to compute the index 
we know that this attack bit board that we get here should be placed in exactly that index in the M bishop tab that we have. To be correct, in the S magic uh, struct, we have something called 2 square BB. And here is the important part of the bitcomps function that I talk about. We use the magic operation here and we get the index a bit down there. We compute the, all the attacks for exactly this combination of blockers. We get the bit board, attack bit board, that we put in this two BB. Below here we have, we put in the two BB into square BB that we have in S magic. And by doing this we connect all the index with the correct attack bit board. I will not talk too much about this function, but here you can see that we do the recursion for first the bit set to 1 and secondly the bit set to 0. And by doing this we will get all the combinations. Okay, we stop here. Enough is enough. And until next time, peace.